Welcome to Knoxville's first and next. An opportunity for the Sincere Seven to share with you the past of Knoxville and move us into the present. From where we've been to where we're going. And the social change movement that brings us to a place of equality, a place of justice, not only in our workplace, but in all places. It's totally necessary for us to educate those who will be following in our, our paths, following in our footsteps, and making a difference in our communities. First and next. Knoxville's First and Next is S7's contribution to Black History Month. Coming up is a video presentation featuring some of Knoxville's future and past leaders and their visions on social and economic change for the city of Knoxville. Once again, thank you for coming out and please enjoy the presentation. Thank you. As we look at Knoxville and the complexion of, of how Knoxville thinks, acts, works, and plays, we realize there's room for change. Yes, we enjoy ourselves and, and all of our entertainment and all the recreational things that we do. But in terms of economic development, social programs, and our everyday living conditions, there is a need for us to stand up and shout injustice or inequality. This is why we examine our history and walk through the place that we call home, Knoxville. Share with you the thoughts and feelings of our past leaders and take you into the future, Knoxville's first and next. Leadership plays a, a very important role in, in where we stand in our communities. Is there a difference between the leaders of yesteryear and the leaders of today? Well, yeah, and, and somewhat is that. And so we have what we call called intellectual revolutionaries. They intellectualize, but not in terms of taking the kind of action necessary to bring about a substance change. Uh, for example, we just got to celebrate uh, the birthday of a great man who was a revolutionary, Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, but some kind of way is that we have permitted society to sanitize him that to believe that he was not a revolutionary. Now, rather than marching toward the church, we should be marching away from the church in terms of facilities uh, that impact our, our lives, either the federal government, local government, or whatever, uh, to bring about something. Why is it that being active and being an activist is important to you? Why is that? Well, th there has to be a, a shift in power. Um, as, as we see it, uh, we always assume that we as African Americans or in a black community are, are hopeless or we're powerless. But in actuality, we have a whole lot of power and we have a whole lot of hope. Um, I, you know, I see activism as something that's revolutionary. And, and it's, it seems as though all, all revolutionaries have either been killed or ran off or whatever, but they had an idea that the conditions that that they were in could be changed, uh, no matter you know whatever means that they had to use in order to change. My life since I was born here and went to grade school here and junior high, finished uh, high school and even went to not, but uh, through the years there were all kinds of different problems and I think leaders have ris risen to the occasion and um, you know have addressed those problems whatever they are of course uh, they're different people these are different times or different personalities are involved. from home example you know 40 years have passed uh, since uh, 
uh, the sit-in movements and the signing of uh, the 1964 civil rights legislation. But we look at that and we've got to find a measure of change. And in 1960, uh, the per capita income of African Americans was like 60, less than 60 percent of that point. And 40 years later, in the year 2003, the capital income of African Americans in Knoxville, Tennessee versus the capital income of white is still less than six. Your opinion, what or how do you see the passing of the torch to the next generation? Well, I'm not sure I even see it. <clears throat> I, uh, I worry about the becoming generation, I realize that there are a lot of young people who are tuned in and who want to make sure things are done properly in the future, but there are so many who could care less, and I think that's what the problem is. Any, any leader, good or bad, has to have some followers, mm -hmm. and I worry about the followers. I worry about young people who don't bother to vote. I worry about young people who don't take full advantage of their education. I worry about young people who are not interested in world affairs, in fact, not even interested in civic affairs. And that really bothers me. That is not to say that all young people are that way, but I, I see the vast majority of young people being in that category. And without real strong leadership, it's difficult uh, to rectify that problem. You have a, a, a black female at Kroger's and a white female at Kroger's. Now, the white female is buying her groceries with dollar bills. The black female is buying her groceries with 58 cents for every dollar. So you can see that has, a, has a, an impact in terms of the education of our children, the social outlet, our diet, our health care, all kinds of ramifications. And again, if that is the, the tremendous the things have not changed drastically in those 40 years, economic, economic, economic. In the future and see, can we come to some resolutions about some policy changes, some courses about the diversity training? Uh, but if we feel that things aren't working as fast or as, as, as good as they should, then we may, we may do something. Ain't gonna let nobody do it. Turn me round, turn me round, turn me round. Ain't gonna let nobody do it. Turn me round, keep on a walking, do it. Keep on a talking, do it. Marching up to freedom, yeah. Ain't gonna let segregation load it. Turn me round, turn me round. Yes, equal treatment, just like any other man without fear of reprisal and intimidation. Is it unreasonable for us, right now in 2003, to be asking for the same rights as men and women that we were asking for in the 1860s and even before then? To bring up new leaders is what we want to do, like Cal Johnson, the first black, successful black businessman and William Francis Yardley, Knoxville's first black lawyer, and Sarah Moore Green, the first black on the school board, and then the first woman, whether black or white. Yes, there are those in our community who are willing to step up and carry the torch and to serve as leaders and to face, to face the opposition that will come against us. Yes, it's necessary for us to build new leaders and places for them to execute our mission, like the Smith Building that used to be at Diedrich and Clinton Street. Well, we call it College Street. And then there's Uncle Dick, Richard Payne, who is known as Knoxville's first black businessman.
Um, my vision and per perception would basically be someone that is um, involved in as much as they can with the community and not specifically choose certain issues based on people that they like, um, things that they tend to not possibly want to sp spread out among the community. I, I think that a leader would be someone who is basically um, willing to serve. Uh, I think what qualifies me is being willing to serve. Um, we've got uh, a lot of people that want to be chiefs and nobody hardly that wants to be Indians. But to be any type of leader, you have to be a follower. So as Chioma, I would hope that the perception with me would be, yes, this is a person who is willing to serve. Um, I would like for people to remember me and know me as a person that's willing to serve in any capacity to give a hand up, not a handout. I would like for them to know that Knoxville is a place that does not tolerate racism, bigotry, and any other unlawful activities. I would like them to be able to know that organizing is a, a consorted effort in solidarity with all groups, not just one specific group. All groups have a leadership position to take and I would hope that um, we can take that stand and, and not get caught up in the, the petty issues of who's leading, who's following, whose idea it was, who idea it wasn't. I would hope that we could just come together in unity and um, build a force that um, this country could learn to develop in their communities. Ain't gonna let nobody know it. Turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody know it. Turn me around, keep on a walking, know it. Keep on a talking, know it. Marching up to freedom, yeah. Ain't gonna let segregation know it. Turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let segregation know it. Turn me round and keep on a walking, yeah, yeah. Keep on a talking, yeah. yeah. Marching up to freedom, yeah. Ain't gonna let no jail no, no. Betray me with the key.